Welcome back to the channel. I just picked up my Silencer Co. Scythe after a long three-day wait. All jokes aside, is it worth getting over an Omega 300 if you already have one? Or is it a better choice if you don't? Let's find out. This is my SIG Cross in 308. Got a primary arms ACSS HUD DMR 3 to 18 by 50 scope. And that's on UTG Pro low rings. Here's the inside of both suppressors. Baffles look just about the same, same with the clip size. Got a little cut the notch in them. That helps the sound actually. Swirls the gases a little better. You can see in my right hand, my Omega. I've had it since 2015. It's got a lot of use, some carbon buildup. That's all right. That's the start of the baffle stack where the bullets enter. And the exit side. The scythe has the sort of scalloped edge here for a removal tool that comes with it in case your suppressor gets stuck. Alright, so here's the Omega 300 base weight. Uh, mine's, of course, used pretty well, but 10, 11 ounces. There's the direct thread. It's about 2.2 ounces to bring it up to 13.2. And 14.7 with the anchor brake. I like the flat cap. It's 14.6. Uh, now we've got the scythe, base weight, 6.3. It's all titanium, even that direct thread, 7.3. And the anchor brake brings it to 8.4. If you want the flat cap, it's made of steel, goes up to 8.7. If you're switching it out to ASR mount, Three and a half ounces, almost three and a half ounces each. Of course, these these are well used as as well. The anchor brakes are interchangeable, but they look a little funny because the scythe is 1.37 inches wide, and the Omega 300 is 1.57 inches wide. The scythe is 132.6 decibels on 308. The Omega 300 is 133.2 decibels on 308. Uh, this may change at your shooter's ear. I don't know if we can hear it in the video, but uh, just having a flat end cap on there instead of an anchor brake will force more sound forward versus outward, where you know it's coming back towards your ears. I wish I could take you out further, but 166 yards and a four-inch target is pretty good.
I've had my Omega 300 on multiple hosts. Uh, it's hanging out on this one for now, for sure. That's uh, my Ruger American Ranch in 762 by 39. Hydro dipped it myself. I've got the Ruger extra shell holder, Super San subs in there. Uh, got a Primary Arms ACSS Raptor 1 to 6 first focal plane scope on UTG Pro rings, low ones. Let's hear one supersonic and then a couple subsonics. And now the scythe. Originally, I bought the Omega 300 for my PTR 91. Best sound in its class of the day. Short, but really does a good job. Uh, nice and lightweight for this heavy gun really helps it out. Um, yeah, I had the break, but still kind of prefer a shorter uh, setup. The break does help some, uh, but 308's not, not terrible for recoil. I got the club foot stock, rubber butt pad, Magpul MS1 sling, primary arms 4 to 14 by 44, ACSS HUD DMR, first focal plane scope on this as well. Um, UTG quick release rings on it. I forgot to mention, I've got Franklin Armory's HKC1 binary trigger, along with HK Parts aluminum ambi safety selectors, and a silencer co chimera which sounds the same as the others, but it's built like a tank. The Omega 300 is definitely the Goldilocks for durability and weight between all three. When hunting or just hiking to your shooting spot, it's best to have the lightest setup because ounces will equal pounds. Also, long range shooters will want to keep their muzzle device as light as possible because of barrel harmonics. I'm glad Silencer Co. got into the titanium suppressor market. I think it's perfect on the SIG Cross. I can take a few shots and not worry about hearing protection. Innovation like that and the Velos LBP ultra low back pressure suppressor are why they're dominating the market. When I bought that, it qualified me for their BOGO. So I've got another Omega 300 coming from this PWS MK109 Mod 2M 300 blackout short barreled rifle. I think it's gonna be great for it. Got any questions, comments? Let me know. Thanks for coming back, and we'll see you again.